Good morning, afternoon, or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here, and welcome back, guys, for another daily cryptocurrency market update. If you're new around here, every single day at 1 p.m. UK time, we try and bring you an update just like this one to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space and also the markets. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to start things off with the charts. We're going to be taking a look um, from a technical perspective at Bitcoin and where it's currently at, dropping down some timeframes. Then we're going to be going over sort of the news over the past 24 hours. Now, one of the big headlines over the past 24 hours was the fact that the SEC has um, delayed more spot Bitcoin ETF applications over plumbing in their own words. So we'll be exploring that. At the same time, you did have Valkyrie's um, futures Ethereum ETF actually go live. So they did approve a futures Ethereum ETF which I actually think is a bigger deal than people um, give it credit for being. Because, you know, I don't just think you're going to have a spot Bitcoin ETF eventually. Um, I also think you're going to have an Ethereum spot ETF and many of the other altcoins and, and baskets of the, those altcoins represented in the forms of spot ETFs. I think that's the way that this is going. Everyone's very bullish on a Bitcoin spot ETF, but you will also have altcoin spot ETFs eventually. And the only hurdle that we've got to really overcome is a regulatory one. And then we'll move into a little bit of macro stuff, looking at inflation. You had Eurozone inflation, um, which has actually dropped to the lowest level in nearly two years. And that's at a time when we're seeing quite a lot of inflationary first spike. You also had in the Netherlands a record um, deflation uh, and actually a negative inflation, which is very interesting. We'll look at a comment from Ray Dalio uh, and then we'll look at some of the, the, the takeaways from um, more Fed speakers yesterday, which I think is very interesting. But let's start things off with Bitcoin. You guys know that we've really been expressing a bit of a short term uncertainty, which I think we've been largely validated in in regards to the market. Actually, we've been uncertain really since here. We said, OK, you could take a bit of a longer sort of you might need that running jump at 30k and since then you've kind of sold off what took place on august 17th which is actually when we had this kind of slip through the markets and um, we believe was just due to a, a, a lack of volume and orders um that you essentially just went through like butter and you've been consolidating since it's very interesting that technically you are still adhering to market structure in regards to an uptrend you haven't actually gone on and put in a new low we're just waiting to see if you put on a new high, although there are a lot of areas of concern here that we've covered previously. You know, we've looked at the possibilities of a deeper ABC correction and the potential for a head and shoulders that could be setting up. This is very much on the cards. And we've said that we maintain a neither bullish or bearish stance on the short term until, for me, really, you've got above um, 28,500. So we're not getting too excited here. You've got a lot of thin sort of volume up here that I wouldn't be surprised if you can kind of get above and um, but you need to see the price action really validate that you know right now we're not necessarily speculating I could see this just as much coming back down to the downside and potentially setting up that head and shoulders as I could actually at taking this and looking for higher targets so we are a little bit uncertain in the short term I don't think this is particularly negative structure at the moment but it's not structure that we'd bet on from a kind of point of control point of view so Crypto is still having to contend with a very um, uncertain macro environment. I'll just head us over to Grayscale's uh, product. This actually looks significantly better than the Bitcoin chart. Now, this is going to be a product that's going to likely be used by an institutional client basis. We know that if a spot ETF is approved and Grayscale recently won one of their lawsuits against the SEC, that the discount window would actually close and you would have a converting of GBTC, which represents Bitcoin, but fluctuates. So it's not pegged to Bitcoin to a spot ETF, which, we, which would be pegged to the Bitcoin price, which means that gap would close and there'd be an Arbitrum trade there. So this actually doesn't look too bad. It looks better than the Bitcoin chart. You know, we do actually assess and we have assessed for a while now that markets generally are at a point, a turning point, you know, a kind of basing and a turning point, you know, we've been very, very early on that call in regards to the likes of the stock market. You know, we had many of our stocks that actually hit targets. Um, and if you look at even things like ARK's ETF, and I don't want to necessarily bet on Kathy Wood, um, but this could be what we could say is the start of a base, uh, essentially. And, and many of the larger stocks are following, even if you look at something like MicroStrategy, 
you know, that th there seems to be a general turning in the crypto markets and markets more um, broadly. And we think that you are now going to be entering a bullish environment. We know there are macro headwinds. You know, the dollar will take a rest at some point, but we don't really want to bet on it. This is the nearly 11th straight week. That is you know, strength, if nothing else. We've got inflation tilting its head up. We've got the bond market, which we've been continuing to highlight that continues to get hit. Um, and then we've got the likes of real estate, which are very interest rate sensitive markets. I am going to release a video on the weekend actually talking about how there is an inevitability with uh, monetary policy, and that is that they have to go back to quantitative easing. And, you know, whether that comes on a break, which is in the form of your hard landing, whether that comes in just a, a kind of reversion and, and things get back to normal in the forms of a soft landing, you know, we'll see how that plays out. But both roads lead to Jerusalem in the sense that the Fed will have to go back and prop up the um, markets because a fiat system, if you understand it inherently, is a debt-based system and you cannot allow that debt. And we've already seen two intervals from central banks, whether that be the gilts market in the UK or whether that be uh, the intervention of 400 billion with Silicon Valley Bank. And you can see this is a representation of that. And obviously, subsequently, the markets, um, you know, really started to rally perfect bottom off the back end of this. And, and that's because, and why I think markets are doing very well is they're climbing that wall of worry. The S&P as a factoid rallies uh, within 2% of two months of a recession. So that means it starts to price in a recession two months prior. You know, I, I think markets are sniffing out the fact that federal policy can't go that much further. Um, and that's my uh, personal take on it. So bringing this back to Bitcoin, because we've gone all over the place there into macro, micro and everything in between. You know, we're still uncertain, but but we don't think this is particularly negative structure just yet until we've got a reason to be short and look for that downside. We were very early on our call to get back into the markets here after getting out of the markets here. Yes, we weren't the first and we'll always hold our hands up. We were late to the bear party, but we avoided a lot of it. And now we're hoping to be early. And I think we have been in regards to Bitcoin. Altcoins still finding their feet uh, in regards to the crypto spring that we do now believe is here. On to a little bit of news. Um, SEC has reportedly taken unprecedented steps of reaching out to spot Bitcoin ETF applications to go over plumbing. Uh, and this is from a Bloomberg senior ETF analyst. Uh, analyst sorry, I always struggle with that word. The dyslexic in me is constantly trying to come out. Um, yes, so within the congressional hearing, Gensler did indeed confirm that Bitcoin is not a security. The reason they are dragging their feet with ETF, uh, a spotty Bitcoin ETF application is likely because they're worried about the um, wider ramifications that it would have for the crypto space at large, which they are continuing to say is in an area of misconduct and outside of the law. Um, I think that's very interesting. Um, and I, I do think you're going to get a spot uh, Bitcoin ETF approved. I just think, you know, they're going to try and drag their feet on it and try and rein in the industry as much as they can until they allow this. It's inevitability. You don't get the likes of BlackRock and all these others filing for it if they didn't think it was of a high likelihood. In the same breath, you also had Valkyrie now uh, approved to offer uh, Ethereum futures. You have Bitcoin futures, you have Ethereum futures. You're going to see this trend continue. You're going to get other altcoin futures. You're going to get altcoin basket futures, like you have, you know, uh, indexes and, 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 and you know, the S&P is, is a basket of stocks. That is all coming. And that's something very bullish to look for on the horizon. Uh, yesterday, you had Fed speakers. There was a number of comments made um, talking about, you know, progression with inflation, talking actually about how, um, you know, it's not going to be an overnight thing and how they're uncertain about, you know, they're very much treading war. It's, it's apparent to me that more so than inflation, monetary policy and monetary policy, remember, is led by the debt markets in the form of the US uh, two-year yield. If we bring up Fed funds, you can see that the two-year yield leads the Fed funds. This has always been historically the correlation. And the Fed and central bank's main mandate is to maybe not on the face of it because it's all about fighting inflation, but it's to make sure that they don't collapse their entire financial system, which is centered around debt. So there's a lot of that going on. There's a whole FX and geopolitical uh, thing to cover in regards to that. Um, you also had a number of other things. You had final GDP for the US, which came out slightly lower um, or basically on target with the previous, but it's stronger growth than expected. Unemployment claims dropped. And you had final GDP index, which was slightly down. So a mixed bag of things. Um, you do have a lot of inflation looking to pop its head back. Today, you've got PCEs, which is the Fed's preferred 
um, index of looking at inflation. It's going to be interesting to see what that reveals. We did get news out of Europe today. Europe, September CPI is 4.3. The estimated was 4.5. Inflation in Europe just fell to a two-year low. And also you can see in the lights of the Netherlands, you've got actually deflation now taking place. Um, very interesting and mixed bag. This all filters into our small but significant market. We've spoken about this kind of pyramid, if you will, of or food chain of markets, bonds and things like that are right at the top. And of course, you've got your plankton, which is crypto right now. Not really doing or not. We really need to see that strength come in and, and, and we're kind of hoping for it as, as uh, long side investors. You do have Ray Dalio saying the US is going to have a debt crisis. It will eventually. Uh, we're going to have a debt crisis in this country. The founder of the hedge fund at Bridgewater Associates said in an interview with CNBC, uh, he goes on to say a number of other things. US debt levels surpassed 33 trillion for the first time. There is a certain point where um, debt and, and quantitative tightening actually becomes quantitative easing because you need to find the money to, to pay for all the tightening. And it, again, it's a very interesting dynamic we find ourselves in across the board uh, and one that we try and keep you up to date with every single day on this channel. So there wasn't a great deal of news. It's still a very low volume, lackluster time for the crypto space. It will come back. It may come back going into October, November, which are historically very bullish months for the crypto space. And of course, you have the Santa Claus rally for the stock market. We do believe from a fact point of view that the stock market is going to continue to climb the wall of worry. Look where it landed. It's uh, 30 weekly moving average. Very common that you do this. We'll see how this um, uh, resolves. We ultimately do think it's to the upside and we think general risk is going in that direction. But we will see. Data is going to be so dependent and we'll keep you up to date on all that on this channel. Uh, and then of course you do have government shutdowns and things coming that we'll maybe cover over the weekend. So I think I've gone on for long enough, guys. We also remain a little bit uncertain on the short term for Bitcoin. We don't think it's the worst structure in the world, but then again, we can just quite easily see a, a version of this and potentially still a downside scenario playing out. But we'll play it day by day on the short term. Ultimately, we have mid to longer term uh, bias that recession isn't coming or a crash which the yield curve isn't coming for a while and that markets will do well up until that point as they have done previously. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. Have a fantastic Friday, guys. I'll catch you all in the next.